it's a proudest day and the proudest time and the a seat of a rally here because that day and that hour and those minutes I got the butt between my teeth you know I really stood up and was counted and said this is not getting away I remember when we pulled on our helmets and, and, and Donald says to me what are we doing I said we're going for gold Barrett that's all we said I can still pick to that run that was just the best best run ever Crunching Gears, the Rally Podcast. Connor, it's not just that time of the week, it's that time of the year again. Uh, the Walton Recycling Donegal International this week, what can we say? Oh, Kevin, just as usual, always looking forward to Donegal. It's always such a cracking weekend and uh, yeah, can't wait. Yeah, I think we're going to do a two-parter this week. So like this the first part, uh, we're going to speak to Rodney Walton, the new uh, lead sponsor. And along with him, then we'll have Brian Brogan, the club chairman, and then Eamon McGee, the COC. And then we catch up with the top three is uh, uh, Calvin Devine, Josh Muffet, and Marianne Evans. And then finally, then uh, number five in the road, then uh, returning Matt Edwards and Dave Moynihan. And just, you know, the story behind that as well, too. So uh, another, you know, Donegal week, Connor, what can we say? The weather's hot. Of the actions, half as hot on the, on the stages will be over the moon. Uh, look, it's it's building up to be a cracking event. Where we are with the Tarmac Championship at the moment, it, like that's still wide open. Um, you mentioned the weather. Fingers crossed it holds. I've seen mixed <laughs> for long range forecasts. And then the other thing we have is we've got new stages. Yeah, yeah. And the guy on the Friday, um, home turf for me. Like, stage two and three, like the loop around the house here. You know, <laughs> like, stage three just or stage two finishes up the, the road, and stage three starts across the road. So. Couldn't be happier for me, I have to say. Um, but yeah, um, it's funny goal. Um, what can we say? Like new stages, yeah, it's fantastic. But you know, still the likes of Nogala, Fan of Atlantic Drive, Glen. You know, like they are names that are synonymous, really. Like I would say, you could say to nearly any fan anywhere in the world, Atlantic Drive or Nogala, and they'll know what you're talking about too. Like they, they reach far beyond Ireland those stages. I know they certainly do. You know. Uh, it's it's obviously the quality of the stages themselves, but also of the competition that we've had over the years and the big names that Donegal has attracted as well. For sure, for sure. You know, can you think about it? Like, you know, Ari Vatman before he was world champion, only three years before he was world champion was here. You know, Colin McRae, whenever he had, took a wee step back from top line rally. Sebastian Lowe when he was at his plum. You know, um, never mind, you know, the local guys then, you know, you know, Andrew Nesbitt, Eugene Donnelly, Cattle Curley, you know, you know, continues on. Bertie Fisher, Austin McHale, you know, it's like all winners of the Donegal Rally and the who's who of Irish Rally. Ah, look, incredible. You know, it, it shows off our talent and it shows off Donegal as well. Like, yeah. you know, when the sun is shining and you look back at the old clips of RPM and, and whatever else and on the limit, like the place just looks fantastic. With beaches and sand and sea in the background. It's, you know, it's incredible when you see Knock Alley. Ah, that's for sure. That is for sure. Um, like this year, you know, We've seen last year, and we always say there's always a sting in the tail with Donegal. It's so unpredictable. It's just, there's probably 12 guys going there at least thinking of a podium of not a one, you know, like, and that says, you know, how high the competition is in Irish Valley at the moment. Ah, look, an overshoot, uh, a spin, a uh, puncture can just change everything you know really can where the, where the levels are at the minute you know there there isn't minutes between these guys anymore it's seconds and tenths of seconds it's tenths of seconds yeah it's, it's yeah. unbelievable yeah so absolutely incredible and you know again for years it was thrown out there oh look Donegal it's always the same stages it's the local lads know it so what we see this year, you know, on the Friday when it, you, they've got to be, go flat out from the beginning, will the new shit stages make a difference? Will the yeah. lack of, of, of knowledge there come, you know, be be evident? That's for sure. Yeah, yeah cause it, get, it will be very interesting. And like, I think, you know, once and for all last year, Matt Edwards and Dave Moynihan dispelled that myth, you know, like they come here first time in, in a Cipron, first time in like a, a, a rally car for months, you know, at that level. And to come in and be not far off the pace Friday, and then come Saturday, matching Callum 10th for 10th almost, you know. And then, you know, unfortunately, we went off on Sunday. But, like, I think, you know, it just shows 
that if you come with the right attitude, with the right notes and the right car, you're not going to be far away. I know exactly. And we've seen that before with visitors. We've seen Loeb and, and, and you know, the McCraes, et cetera, as well, between Jimmy and, and Colin and that come in the past. Um, you know, the, the right mindset, the right attitude. Yes, you're not far away, but, you know, there's a little bit of local knowledge there it always helps as well. Of course it does. Of course it does. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I think without further ado, we'll uh, catch up with, to start with, is Rodney Walton from Walton Waste Recycling, who's, you know, come on board now as part of the three year deal. And then Brian Brogan, the club chairman, and then finally then Ewan McGee, they're all on together. But Rodney, uh, Walton Recycling has come on board now as the main, sur- uh, main sponsor for the Donegal International Rally this year. What prompted you to get involved in the rally this year? I suppose a hurdle of the grapevine jewel uh, was discontinuing their sponsorship of the Donegal Rally. And I made an inquiry about it, uh, about sponsoring the rally. And uh, it really snowballed from there, yeah. Yeah, and like, you know, like the Donegal Rally, it's, you know, probably one of the biggest and best rallies in the country. But not only that, it brings, you know, it's such more, more than a rally. Like it, it's, you know, an event. And like we see what it brings into the county, the full hotel beds, you know, cafes, hotel, you know, B and B's, even the local shops all get a benefit out of this. Like, it must be. Uh, are you pleased with what you're seeing so far for the for for your business? Absolutely, it's uh, probably uh, exceeding my expectations, um, and uh, already we can see it uh, benefiting our business. Yeah. And like you know, like Brian, from your point of view, like you know, you wouldn't, you know, you've done a goal man, you know, you've lived and breathed the rally. Like this year is looking, you know, it's looking as if it's going to be as good, if not better, than ever. Uh, there's no doubt on that. Uh, I suppose in listening to the new the new sponsor is, is a huge, huge endorsement of Donegal Motor Club and the Donegal International Rally, and it, it always brings new. I suppose new people come, they're all looking to get on board, everybody wants to be part of it and it's really exciting for us going forward for the next three years to have Rodney on board and, and Walton Recycling and you know the brand of the recycling and Walton is it's new and, and we intend to help them going forward as much as they'll help us, it'll be, be a joint venture for, for both of us going forward and, and it's really good and it's really enthusiastic for Donegal Motor Club to be involved in the same and and uh, even if you go back to look at the scale of the entry that we have now at the minute, and it's you know it's it's enormous for us again one more time uh, to be sitting with near forty in reserve. It's uh, it's something that we'd never expected to be honest with you. And, and it's great to have so many club men involved, and there's so many people that that are starting rally, and so many people that are at this point you know starting their careers younger now, and and training up and, and making the thing happen. It's it's very encouraging for us to have so many in the county as well uh, to promoting that going forward too it's fantastic to be honest yeah like you know looking down through the entry like you know uh, the, 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 the so many Donegal names in it and like that's great to see like you know not you know like 51 years ago this rally started out and like, it, it was like there was a great following for rally but there's very few Donegal competitors competing and the, the way that has snowballed over the years it's it's it's, it's become an almost a monster on its own if you if you take even the launch that we had up on Higgins Auto Service on, on Friday evening there and the big crowd you were there yourself the crowd yeah. you know the, the amount of even young people there the, the, you know the youth that's it's very important to have people like that coming through because yeah. we always remember ourselves whenever we were young where you were going to a guide you were going to a launch you were going to watch the local man and the event and stuff you always you know, them's all memories you all the all of them memories and those young people have the memories too going forward in years to come so. It's about, we, we had 50, 51 years now, and it's about the next 52 we need to be looking at and going forward and trying. It, it's our role uh, to make this happen and to con- continue to make it happen. So mm-hmm. we all have a part to play, but uh, on Friday evening, to be fair, it was, it was fantastic, really encouraging for everybody involved. And, mm-hmm. and if you look at the, the amount of work that goes on behind the scenes, day in, day out, uh, for the last few months, and as Eamon knows, he has, he has a world experience in that, that it's uh, a it's rewarding for the people that are involved in it to see that the whole thing can come together, it can work, and, and it's good for everybody, and yeah. including Wilson Waste and Recycling. Yeah, and like Eamon, you know, we talked about the work going on behind the scenes. Like, you have been flat out, like, probably day and night now at this stage. Uh, like, th- it's not just a matter of rocking up on Friday morning and let's go rallying. Like, there's, <laughs> it's, it, it, there's a serious amount of work goes on that people never see. Uh, yeah, unbelievable amount of work, uh, Kevin. Um, because the you know what, especially the year we were up on the when the southern side of the county, like you know, and it's, 
and it's new ground and new new challenges and everything else. But like um, the boys are up there, and, and the boys even the, all of the team are working hard and, and doing stuff, and it's unbelievable how many times we go over them stages. You know, you think you just pick stages, but like we've been over them stages maybe. 30, 40 times, different things, dealing with different issues and trying to, trying to help out and keep, make sure that the whole thing runs perfectly on the day. Like. Yeah. And like Rodney, like this is probably you know one of the first times you've been seeing behind the scenes as such. Like, does it give you a new appreciation of what's what's involved in running the rally? Absolutely. It's a huge eye-opener um, for uh, people puts in massive effort that really don't get enough credit for and really aren't seen as such. You know, everybody comes to see the drivers of the do, you know, and they talk about the drivers. But really, the people in the background, you know, they make it happen. They make they make, they make the rally happen so we can drive. Yet not all we're the ones that talked about. But in every that goes in every club. There's uh, people work very, very hard and, uh, you know, gets... Maybe not half enough thanks or exposure. I suppose, listen, they're, they're maybe not in the limelight to get exposure, but uh, Donegal has come to a, a different level and uh, we have a different appreciation for what is happening in the background and the work that goes into it. Uh, and it's just not weeks out, it's months. Uh, and, and maybe even, you know, going back nine months preparing for the next event. So... You know, like really, really impressed with how well it organised and, you know, it has been. Yeah. And the game, and they get, you know, what Rodney was saying there, like probably as the cars has gone off the finish ramp last year, there's probably somewhere in the back of your head going, right, that's that done. Do you start formulating almost immediately again? Well, like, you know, you, you, you talk about what we do to do, do um, because leading up to, to like this event or last event, like, you were talking to the councilman and you say, well, we need to do a tarn program for a certain such a place like you know, Lake Gatton, they're doing tarn on there. So we're going to have to drop that and we're going to have to look somewhere else. And, you know, there, there's definitely, ways, you know, it's, it's a two-year cycle, really. Like, look, you're looking, at, you're looking ahead. And, and then when you see something, when you do something like so, and you say, that, well, that worked well and people like that, like, you know, you just have to plan around it again. Like, you know, mm-hmm. Yeah, like that. Change it that's what that's what amazed me last year. You know the the legends. You know the likes of uh, John Lyons, Vincent Bonner, and them guys. They never actually drove Garton as a stage. Like, no. and it's already regarded as a classic. And you know, and it's probably only been used maybe in ten, you know, ten, twelve years really. So, like Brian, there's still roads out there that that's probably on top really for as far as the rally is concerned. Uh, well, Garton turned out to be spectacular. There's no doubt. Whenever he went down at the start, as was it was part of. Uh, Half a stage, it would have been a Trenta stage, would have been a, an old classic back in the day, but <clears throat> it got accompanied then by uh, the, doing, from doing well up, and it, and it really turned out to be one of the best stages of the event. And still, and it will continue, it'll be used again, I'm sure, again in the future, too. It's, it's only just for for a tiring program that is, that's not running uh, this year, but th- there are stages there, you're right. Uh, some of them, you know, you can half them and split them, and, and we're doing a fair bit of that, to be fair. It is, I mean, has looked at a lot of different stuff and changes and chopping and, and to make it happen, and there's there's a lot of logistics really in place from from start to finish to make a stage happen. From your safety plans, your road look, books, and stuff like that to make them all all uh, tick the box in, in relation to distances and travels and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's, mm-hmm. it's 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 complicated too when you get into the fine tuning of it too. Like yeah. everything mm-hmm. work the way you'd like it to be. <laughs> yeah. You can't go past the house. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Like, love to. Yeah. 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 That you know, like as Rodney was saying, like you know, it's. You know, it's the drivers get all the credit, but it's those guys in the background that's, you know, it's, it's greased the wheels, you know, and without them, the, the rally just wouldn't happen. That's just the long and short of it. Yeah. And that'd be for, sorry, Ian, go ahead. That'd be for sure. Like, you know, uh, it's unbelievable the, the, the work that, the, the unseen work that goes on. Like, you know, even there now, you know, there are boys out there now, they're out tomorrow evening, painting roads, you know, or what I mean, painting for put up signage and posting and stage commanders they come from far and near to come and you know and we're very grateful to them people you know and, and the effort that they do put on just uh, it's their love for the sport and it's their love for the to make sure that the whole thing happens on, on the on the weekend yeah that's for sure for you and like rodney you were at the lunch there too like 
uh, you know, it was unbelievable. The crowds had turned out on a Friday evening, just, you know, like, in a really beautiful evening. You know, people could be away to the beach or whatever, but like, to turn out in such numbers for the launch of the rally, it shows that, you know, Donegal rally fever was kicking in. Absolutely. Uh, the number of people and, uh, you know, past and present winners uh, getting up and speaking and, uh, you know, coming a, a good distance to be part of that uh, and getting their experiences and um, then right down to, you know, Motorsport Ireland being there and uh, the committee being there and, you know, the selection of rally cars and the way Everton was laid on, you know, it was way beyond what I expected. So it was, but, you know, at this stage, I shouldn't really expect anything else, but it, it definitely, uh, I suppose, the evening that was in it, beautiful sunshine, and, um, you know, as uh, Brian said there, uh, children there. And um, a lot of us will forget about it next year. Some of them memories will stay with them for a lifetime because they'll maybe have seen the winner talking mm -hmm. uh, or the loser, you know. So, uh, you know, it's about the wee ones coming along and someday they could be standing at the mic talking and it's about keeping the the... I suppose the rally uh, days like that going f in, in their memory and them being part of it going forward. Yeah, like, you know, or, like uh, uh, we're all kind of like a you know a vintage. Like we remember, you know, the likes of Billy Coleman's and these guys. Like, and to see those guys, you know, in the flesh, not just on the TV screen. Like that was like you remember those days, and you all like I remember like meeting Billy Coleman in '84, I think it was, and like I still remember it as if it was yesterday. You know. But like that's as you say, it's it's the young people that's going to drive the future of the sport. Absolutely, uh, you know, and we we you know we all remember uh, going and, and seeing them play people drive as well, and you know it was it it was their their skill on on the tar that and then you know putting a face to that skill and seeing them like that really sticks in your memory, whether you're I suppose seven. 17 or 27 or older, you know. Um, uh, so it was it was nice to see them, people talking and giving their experiences of Donegal and what Donegal meant to them. For sure, for sure. And like, you know, Walton Recycling, you know, like it's an, a nationwide brand now at this stage. What do you feel that, that, that Donegal can help you with? Well, already, like the exposure we've got of it so far has uh, exceeded uh, what, we, what we would have thought. Um, I suppose, uh, yes, we are nationwide. We deal with uh, other metal and waste companies around the country, uh, a lot of them in Donegal and down the West Coast as well as the East Coast, and we cover the Midlands and Cavan. So um, to be part of Donegal, uh, like it's something we will look back at in 10, 20 years' time, look at the programmes, look through it all going well, look at the pictures, look at the, the photographs of uh, a lot of staff that's coming up to give us a handout, us competing in it. Um, so for that alone, it will create great memories and, and, and you know, within the within our own group, as well as exposing us to, uh, to you know, from waste companies to, to you know, and every type of business, because let's be honest, if you're a business, uh, you're generating waste as well as, uh, you know, an ordinary person. So, you know, for us, uh, this is great advertising. I think, Brian, from your point of view, to hear that, that you know, that, that Donegal is providing such a, a great platform for uh, Walton Recycling, that must, you know, like, do your heart good listening to that. Oh, absolutely. There's no doubt. And, and listen, there could be close to 100,000 people, I suppose, travelling to Donegal over that weekend. And, and all of those, you know, they're from all over Ireland and they'll see the brand. And, and it's, uh, it's encouraging for us that that will be for the market, Walton Waste and Recycling on that scale, because it's, it's something that uh, you only get the one weekend at and, and it'll continue then for the following year and the year after. But, but everybody that, that comes to Donegal will have a connection in some shape or form with Rodney and his business at some shape uh, along the production line, let it be from Donegal uh, suppliers here to, to Rodney or uh, from some other, from let it be Galway or some other part of the country, but they'll still have an attachment to him, which is hugely beneficial for, for us and for, for Walton as well. It's very, very important that 
that that message gets out there to be seen that it is a nationwide company and it's a growing company and we intend to, to support it and make it grow. That's it's a joint venture, I'd say, for us. For sure, for sure. And then, Eamon, even from your point of view, like to have Rodney and his, his company on board, it, it probably helped to open the door for you as well. Ah, it certainly does. It certainly does. Um, it makes it make like very easy that you know, and but we 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 can even as you say we go down to uh, do PR work and then you would say to people you know who's this working by well you know we would say to them well if we ban you but it it'll go through his hand at some stage in the world like, mm-hmm. even from you know and south to the north of the county there or something yeah. and that's probably what that is too like you know, that he takes a lot of the the waste that comes from the go and stuff so. You know, they, they, they really then who their part was all about. Mm-hmm. That's for sure, that's for sure. And like Rodney, we touched on it a wee bit earlier, like, you know, the, what this brings into the county, like, you know, you are now back behind the wheel of a rally car and you're going to get seen those, you know, stages from the inside. Like, is it something you look forward to, that getting relished and being back behind the wheel? Absolutely. Uh, I think, uh, like as I said, uh, it's probably, you know, it's 10 years since I've done Donegal and it was nine years since I sat in a rally car. Um, but there was one rally that would always affect me and that was Donegal of a Friday morning to the point where, you know, you, you, you'd you almost steal a car to go. Um, <laughs> and to be back here now, like, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's both nerve, ner- you know, you're, you're excited and nerves at the same time. Uh, and I suppose you wouldn't be looking forward to it unless them two things was happening, yeah. you know? Yeah, for sure. And like, Brian, like, you know, you're the chairman of the club, but you're also a competitor. Like, you know, do you be nervous even coming up, you know, like Friday morning, you're, you know, strutting and heading through the gap, do, you know, will there be nerves there as well? Oh, there certainly will. There certainly will. But you, as Rodney said, you'd be excited too. You'd be looking forward to it and you're preparing for it and you're trying to make, make everything happen that you possibly can. And, and that's what it's about. And, and anybody who's not nervous, I'd say, is probably not trying. And you need to you need to enjoy it too. But it's, it, you need to try and get the Friday evening and, and take a look around. But there's there's a lot of work on it. It's a big effort made. And it's mm-hmm. important to have everything sort of clicking at the one time. And that's uh, there, there's probably a two-prong approach on it from, from, uh, from the Tuesday on. The vice chairman, who is Eamon, will be will be acting chairman. That's what happens there. So he will take on the shores, and, and I'll try and try and be a pilot. Then, if I can at all, that's the intentions. <laughs> and like Eamon, from your point of view, like you know, you've been doing COC now for nine, ten years. Like, does it does it get easier, or does it still get as nerve wracking leading up to the event? No, it, it, it never gets any easier. Like you know, you always say it to yourself, you know. Way, you know, which well, is my last year, you know, but then all of a sudden, once the Sunday comes again, it's just can't wait to get back out of it again. Like, you know. But there is times in it where it is hard work and it's very, it's very trying on, 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 on people, you know, when you have to get, but you do, you, you just knuckle down and you try and get everything again coming into the weekend um, for trying to get as much help as you can on the stages and make sure that the stages are run because you know that there is 160 cars coming up the road mm-hmm. and you want to make sure that all them stages are up and running and everything else. So it can be very, very, very tiring, all right. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, like, do, you know, do you even ever think like the normality of the event, like, do, you know, do you ever sort of step back and think, you know, that, that this is bringing in a, like how many million into the county or you just not have time for that. It's just, you, you're there to do your job. No, we, I, I would never look at it that way. Like, you know, we'd look at just to get, look at stages and, and hopefully that when the stages are up and running, that the competitor is happy with the stages and, you know, and so, you know, the, the biggest buzz I would get probably is on this the Sunday evening coming in. You talk to competitors and say that love that stem stages, love the Saturday Friday, or how that worked. That was a great event, you know. And that gives you then the, the but up to the weekend, you know, you don't think of these things at all. You know, mm-hmm. see people of what it's about, but just you're concentrating on this one thing and just make sure that stages are live and they're hopeful that they, everybody gets off them and safely as well as you know. Kevin. For sure, for sure. And like Brian, from your own point of view, like, you know, people coming to the event, you want them to do it in a safe way, you know, listen to the guards, listen to the officials, all those things, you know, like, that's vital. 
Oh, it's very important. And, and listen, we, we all do a good job at, at portraying and getting them out there and getting the message out there for everyone. So it is very important that they listen to that it be the marshals and officials and anyone that's involved along the route and, and the heat by any of the recommendations that they're making. Always find yourself in a safe place. And you know, there's, there's lots of precautionary measures taken there. So if everyone would aid and, and listen to what they're told, it, it'll be a, a very safe and a very successful weekend for all, we hope. Yeah, and like uh, Rodney, like from your point of view, like you know, you're looking forward to getting back behind the wheel and you know, getting back onto the stages again. Like I'm sure you're echo the guys' comments. You know, listen to do what you're told. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, that's uh, we have to set an example as as competitors and um, the people coming to it. You know, uh, must set an example as well. Uh, because uh, you know that the rally has a good name. Uh, it 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 needs to stay that way, and um, you know all going well. Uh, you know um, it it will be on the weekend, uh, but uh, you know, and as Eamon says, a safe rally for both the competitors and spectators. That's for sure, that's for sure. And Eamon, I suppose we'll finish with yourself. Like, if anybody wants to get involved, like, you know, you're, you're always glad to help with marshals and, you oh. know, all them kind of things are all gratefully appreciated. Oh, well, very much okay, Kevin and I, because, like, you know, uh, there's a lot of effort, a lot of people, we have a lot of people coming, but in the next couple of days, hopefully anybody that wants to be part of Donegal, you know, then the, there's, you know, we'll take take anybody on board and if they've got any, the, the contact numbers are right there and anybody wants to come, we'll, uh, we'll certainly be more than glad to take all the help we can because of the, of the, of the crowds come that are expected to come. I think we need that. We need to be, get ready for the game ball too. Well, uh, thanks very much to the three men there for taking the time to join us. And as Eamon was saying there at the end of the podcast, if you can volunteer, helping in the way at the weekend, your help will be gratefully appreciated. Um, go to the Donegal International Rally Facebook page. There's contact details there for uh, Tony Boyle, who is the Chief Marshal, and there's also the meeting points for all the marshals there and all that too. So if you want to get involved, please do. Um, yeah, Connor, we were fortunate enough to get a chance to catch up with Callum, Josh and Marion there last week before the whole madness kicked off this week. Like, talk about three boys ready for action. Oh look, and at the same time, you know, when you chat to them, there's relaxed as anything, you know. Mm-hmm. But like, there's, there's, there's a, you know, international rally at stake here and a tarmac championship as well that they're all fighting for. Yeah, definitely. You know, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. You know, will, you know, will the championship be in the back of the mind? You know, will it come Sunday? Will the, the points come into it, or will it be flat out? You know, will the rally one mean more to them than the, the points? It'll be, it's fascinating. It's hard to know, and look, I, I can't speak for any of the three of them, but you certainly have the impression, you know, particularly Josh and Callum, it's about Donegal nearly. Yeah, I like, I think Josh had said it himself, before he won last year, he tweeted like any other rally, but I think the one last year, sort of, he now, of the opinion, it's a wee bit special, you know, and like, I don't know if it took that one to do that, they left it, like, they left the shackles off, <laughs> it's probably a bit dramatic, but, you know, um, it just shows, like, I think, you know, there's <laughs> no point in me trying to hide it, like, Donegal is my favourite rally of the year, can't say anything else different, uh, but to, to see other people experience that, that, that that's brilliant. It is. It's absolutely incredible. And, you know, years of, 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 of competition, like the lads growing up watching their heroes and then to become the heroes themselves to the other younger generation coming up through the ranks as well. But it's the, the pace they go at is just incredible. Like, you know, watching last year, Callum and Josh and Marion on those stages, like they were incredible. That's for sure. That is for sure. You know, and the Callum, the like, first rally ever done was Donegal back in the, the day. And he admitted himself, you know, he went there with his father and all that years before that as well, too. And then Marion, they like, coming over here whenever they were running uh, Gary Jennings and then obviously Manus as well, too, the Melvin Evans guys as well. Like, there's a lot at stake for Melvin Evans Motorsport the weekend as well. There absolutely is. Yeah, you have Marion and then obviously um, Matt Edwards is out in, in the other polo from, from the, the, the Evans stable. So, yep, there's a lot there. And again, typically they're immaculately turned out, very well prepared cars. Uh, and Evans is, you know, motorsport are always at the top of their game. So, you know, we can expect to find uh, well set up polos for Donegal. That's for sure. That is for sure. But, you know, 
like Callum, you know, he has that fire in his belly. He, he, he's met himself, done the goals the one he wants. Um, it's just, it's, you know, I'm not even going to try and call it because I just think it's it's going to be a fascinating battle. But I think in a way, without further ado, we'll catch up with Callum, Josh, and Marion. Josh, you're going in there with the number one in the door after one in last year. Does that bring its own different pressures to the event, or do you approach it the same as any other rally? Yeah, it probably does. It's not something I've thought about too much yet. Like Donegal's a very challenging. It's it's a certainly it's a very long rally, and I suppose like half the battle is getting to the end of it. Um, so yeah, look at I suppose we're just going to take the rally in our in our own stride, and uh, obviously you need to be there or thereabouts. But if you're if you're there there at the end, you want to be sort of trying to fight for the win at that stage, you know. So um, yeah, by all means, we're we're, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, and like you know, last year proved what you were saying. Like, like you made a wrong ch- tire choice on the Friday morning. Like I, I was speaking to you at first service on Friday. Like uh, you know, sorry, the halfway point on Friday, and the heads was down. But it just showed you, you know, you picked yourself up. You, you know, that the rally wasn't over to the rally's over. So like, you, the, the, with three days, there's always a twist and a turn somewhere along the way. Yeah, exactly, and I and I suppose we probably started the rally with that mindset, thinking. Well, it is a long way to go, and, and we probably went in the safe tire, and the safe tire turned out to be a terrible choice because it, it got so dry so fast. Uh, and uh, yeah, obviously we, we lost a lot of time there at the start of the rally, but as you said there, like we, we just we plowed away throughout the weekend, and other other people were less fortunate, and you know we, we were there at the end to to pick up the pieces. Yeah. Uh, we all know how close you come last year, Callum. Like it must have been heartbreaking on the, the Sunday morning to you know to be so close, but to have it taken away from you like, in such a cruel manner. Yeah, uh, it probably was. Uh, it was a hard one. The uh, hard one to swallow now, but yeah, that's that's the way it is. As, as Josh says it, there it's a long rally. Um, you need to be there at the end, you know. So it's a long three days, and. To be fair, now there was another big day's rally in ahead come Sunday. Um, so yeah, it was a yeah small mistake on our part anyway, and uh, we just got caught out. So yeah, looking forward to hopefully getting back at it, and yeah, be hopefully be fighting at the front again. You know. Yeah, and like you know, does it, do you is there any difference in the, the way you prepare for the rally to any other rally? The like so you know the circuit, the, you know it been a one day and you know Donegal been three. Is it like the car completely re prepped again or? You know, do you yourself prepare any differently? I uh, like we, we've been quite busy there now. Um, the car, we give the car a good reprep um, before Donegal last year. Um, and then, um, yeah, we're, lucky <laughs> enough, we didn't, we didn't hit the car all year and didn't do much. So, um, yeah, it's just getting the same again, new drive shafts, bits and pieces like that. So it does get a bit of an overhaul, you know, because it's, yeah, it's a tight three days is a long it's a long it's a long uh, it's a long event it's like i don't know three three na- three national rallies um the mileage there so yeah look we have to prep it you know um so yeah it's it's it plenty of work goes into it and it's obviously for the three-day recce too it's quite long so yeah it has to be a big a big effort on, on both ends you know so yeah, it's a big event. Yeah, and like Josh, which should go back to you. Like you know, Calvin Rally a couple of weeks ago, you yourself and Calvin was in there for the you know the big fight going into the last stage. Like, was there any thought of Donny Gold then, or was it I want to beat that other wee bugger now? You know. Yeah, <laughs> 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 uh, I think uh, there wasn't much thought of Donny at that stage. Um, I certainly I had my eyes set on, on on trying to win Calvin. Um, obviously. I could have left myself in a in a pretty bad position heading into Donegal in, in a very short period of time, but uh, look at it, it, it paid off for us and it, it helped us along with that championship there as well. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, look at it. I suppose it gives us the confidence again after Killarney as well, where people were sort of <clears throat> saying, "Oh, what happened? The pace or whatever? Have you lost it nearly or one thing or another?" So uh, it was nice to, to prove that we still had a bit of pace. Yeah, like people were very quick to write you off, like you know, like you know, oh, is the, is the car showing its age, you know, what? But like, you, uh, uh, maybe it's not fair, but Clarny has never really been kind to you, like, and you know, you still picked up good points at the end of it. I think that for you, I think it was a good result that you come away with at the finish. Yeah, exactly, and and quite similar to last year as well, where we weren't racing for the win by any measure, and and we still ended up with second come the end of the rally, so. Yeah, look at Killarney's just one of those rallies for me, and 
Um, I think I, I'm better just trying to get to the finish of it than than fighting for for the for the win, maybe. But it's a uh, look. It's a cruel. It's a cruel rally. Like there's a lot of people always crash out of it, and and as whoever's there to pick up the pieces usually get good results. So yeah, look at I suppose we take what we get whenever it comes to Killarney, you know. Because like we were like, in the Calvin rally there, we were at the very last junction of the very last stage. And like, I, I would say you took at least a, a second and a half off everybody else on that corner because you just threw it in that like it was just, uh, I don't know what it felt like in from inside the car, but it, from the outside it just looked like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I suppose that's what you had to do to, to make the difference between winning and losing. Yeah, like, and for sure, as we all know, Callum's always going very fast, like, so the, the, there was there was no time to be hanging about in there, like, it was all or nothing sort of thing, so, yeah, look, at, thankfully, it, it paid off, as I said, and it was nice to get another win there. Yeah, and, like, Marion, from your point of view, like, you know, these guys now, again, have a, a national rally below their belt before they're going to Donegal, too. You mentioned before that you felt that maybe that was giving you a slight disadvantage, like, is the pace that tight now and that high that you can't be seen to give these boys any advantage at all? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can't give them an advantage, of course. But <laughs> to be honest, like to be fair, Cavan was what three weeks ago. By the time Donegal comes around, so I don't know how much of a direct impact that'll make. I think the one before the circuit probably made a fair bit of difference, where the boys are in Kerry the week before, and I think the circuit is only like five or six days after. I think something like that would help a lot more, but. I think for me personally, the biggest thing is that I missed out on probably 85% of Kalani as well. So, um, yeah, you know, I haven't driven the cars in, so I'm sure it'll be okay. It's just, it's almost, you get a feeling of like that um, first rally of the year feeling again, where you're not sure if you can still drive and things like that, you know. But um, yeah, look, I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, the guy sitting next to me in the team has is, is, is even more time out of a car, so um, it didn't seem to bother Matt so much last year. So. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go making excuses before the rallies even started, you know. And the, the, the great thing about this year is the Friday is going to be new stages. Like, so, you know, it's not that you're going into somewhere that the other guys have done five, six times or whatever. It's going to be, you know, fresh and new for everybody. Does 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 that bring its own challenges or is that something you relish? Maybe Marion will start with you and that one. Yeah, I, I don't mind the new stuff, to be honest. It's always kind of a... A clean slate anyway you know everyone should have a, a clean set of notes you know if those i think if these stages have been used it's, it's at least 10 to 15 years ago which you know a lot changes in that that sort of period of time so yeah it'll be interesting even because last year i think they turned the stages around for 19 but still people kind of knew what the roads are like you know so these ones on friday next week they seem to be very different and very different profile to, to the rest of the rally as well you know they're quite choppy bumpy stuff so um yeah, a lot of other dimensions are they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like Callum, you know, like I don't think it, it, you the harvest in twenty twelve. I don't think you you probably didn't do that rally either. Like so, like this will be completely new territory to you as well. Yeah, it's it's, it's all new. Um, obviously at that launch, I was kind of trying to figure out a wee bit about the stages, other than Kelly and Duffy saying it was quite similar to Cavan, which is probably good for like me and Josh, obviously. But um, yeah, I think. Rally Ireland stages maybe it was used or or different direction in twenty twelve or something from the Donegal Harvest but yeah that we weren't we weren't there back then so um that's all new to us you know but yeah looking forward to it as as Marianne says it adds a wee bit of different dimension to it doesn't it obviously from the from the usual you know so yeah a wee change you know harm yeah and like Josh your your thoughts on the new stages if you have you had a chance to look at the DVD or nothing yet yeah no I haven't looked at anything yet um. Mm -hmm. I'll worry about that come come the recce, I hope. And he's and a he's a wee, he's a wee flubber, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's the kind of thing like I, I think new stages is good and and I do my preference would be that there'll be more new stages to be honest, because I do think stages that are run every year, people are studying them uh, to every last stone and corner on it and uh, I, I suppose the speeds are getting higher and higher where for me I certainly don't have the, the time or or that to, to study previous years DVDs and all that carry on so uh, the, the new stuff where it leaves everybody on clean slate for me is, is good. Yeah 
Yeah. And like, you know, we talked to Callum there about you know, the prep of the car, you know, like Tom Gaffin's running your car. Is it like a, basically a, a rebuild from front to back before Donegal as well? Um, yeah, look at Tom Gahan, as everybody knows, runs our cars and uh, like he does a fabulous job. Like they're more or less perfect for us, thankfully, every time. So, um, yeah, I'm sure he'll give them a, a good overhaul now and replace whatever's needed before uh, Donegal for sure. Considering it is such a long, a long event, you don't want to take any chances on it. Uh, you wouldn't. If there's any components getting close to their mileage, you'd, you'd be changing it out beforehand. Uh, you just nobody wants to take the risk at that stage, especially for Donegal, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's for sure. And like yourself and Andy, like have formed such a, a tight partnership there now. Like, does that like does that take away a lot of the stress for you? Like, do, is, does it allow you to just concentrate on the driving that you know that you know Andy will have taken care of all the other bits and pieces? Okay, it does, and I suppose the most uh, important thing with the likes of uh, Andy and Keith sitting with me, like you know, I, I can go down the stage, and I have no concerns that the, like they're going to call the, the right notes at the right time, uh, and the two of them are, are top class at what they do. Like so, yeah, it lets me concentrate and just driving and focusing on, on what I need to do, and and I know they're going to deliver uh, what I need and, and when I need it, you know. Yeah. And like you know, speaking to like you know, big like Matt Edwards, he talks about the, you know the process, the system that he has in place. Do you, do you have a, a process or a system? You know, that you're rolling up to that. You know, like you know, you start pulling on the belts and one thing or another. Is there like, like any like a, uh, things you have to do? Like, is there wee superstitions rather than creep in, or is it just get going? <laughs> <laughs> not so much. Like, not that. Well, I don't know. Unless there's something I do. Two day bottles for Josh, I think. <laughs> Look at the bottles. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the bottles bouncing away. <laughs> yeah, I need the sugar rush, like to be fair. Like, so I drink plenty of the plenty of Lucas Aid, but apart from that, no, there's not much else. Yeah, and the like, Cal Callum, the same question to yourself. Like, is, is there like a nervousness there, but especially on the you know driving out? Like, it's quite a uh, long drive out to the first stage. Like, will nerves get the better of you? Are you, are you quite collected in the car? Yeah, you obviously, I think, for the first stage every rally, you have a wee bit of nerves, probably. Um, like of Donegal, you probably would be. But, yeah, once you get the first stage on the, you know, you get back into it, you get the feeling of the car again, and you know, everything kind of just goes goes the way it should be most of the day, do you know what I mean? So the feeling's there again. So, yeah, yeah, we probably, we probably would just, I don't really know. I don't really know if we have much of a, um, yeah, we kind of just get on. Once we get the first stage out of the road, we kind of just get into our own thing and we kind of, Gauge where we're at and see what uh, see what sort of form we need to be in and what pace we need to be at, you know. So kind of take it like that. Yeah, you don't feel you have to put on your right your your left glove before your right glove. You know, the people of you know we fur boys that got there. There's nothing like that really. No, not not too like that. It's usually a panic station. Usually they get your helmets and hat, helmets and gloves and all on. So it's it's whatever one you get onto first. You know, once they once they give you the shot, you know, they hurry up. You know, so yes. Mm -hmm. no. And, and Marianne, for yourself, like, you know, a similar question, like, is it, you know, is it calm in the car or is there jitters there before the start? And driving out of the stage is fine for me. I'm, I'm always worse off, I think, in service. You know, you're standing around just the car sitting on the sheet or waiting to put some tyres on. And as soon as I get in the car and drive off, I'm, I'm okay until, you know, I think like Callum said, you get to the stage then and there's obviously, if you do your tyre pressures and everything and with the helmet on, the nerves start to build a bit. But, um, yeah, I, I tend to be happy when I'm sitting in the car and it's kind of just me, you know. <laughs> Whatever, I, I hate the morning where, where people are coming up to you and they're asking you if you're ready and all that rubbish. It's just obvious questions, isn't it, really? But what else can you say? <laughs> <laughs> That's true, I suppose, right enough, actually, yeah. Uh -huh. And, like, you know, we're going back then to familiar territory on the Saturdays and the Sundays. Like, you know, Josh, you were saying you'd like more new stages, but you still have to go to Donegal, you still, you know, you want to do your knock as you want to do your, your fun as you want to do your Atlantic drives as well. So it, it's a kind of a, it's a, a hard one to call, you know, you want new stages, but you want to do the classics as well. That, that's what makes Donegal Donegal, I suppose. Oh, of course it is. Like, I, I think we all still enjoy those stages. Like, so yeah, look at it's, I suppose it, it's, it's a mixed basket there where you like the new stuff and you like the old stuff. Mm -hmm. And I suppose Donegal usually delivers a good mix of that anyway. So, yeah, look at, I think everybody always looks forward to Donegal. So, um, yeah. Yeah. And I like, just think, like, last year, yourself and Andy won the rally. Like, the, 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 at the finish, you just uh, rolled into the Rosapena Hotel. Like, that was, like, 
it was something that could never have been written. You know, you could never set that down the bit of paper and says, we'll do this, this and this. Like, there was something very special about that afternoon, wasn't there? Yeah, certainly. Like, it was a bit, uh, it was a bit surreal, like, uh, coming to terms with what just happened. And, you know, I suppose we've won quite a few rallies to date and people go on about Donegal and... I suppose up to that point, I nearly would have been like, sure, it's just another rally, like, what about it? But whenever you're there in, in the situation and you finally win or whatever, it, it is it's certainly a special one to win. And, um, yeah, look at it. Uh, hopefully it won't be our last time, but, yeah, that, <laughs> it, it felt good. It felt good for sure. Yeah, like, whenever you had, like, you know, Ari Vatten and, you know, uh, Vincent Bonner, James Collin, like, legends of the sport coming up and patting you in the bike and shaking your hand, like, that that has to be pretty cool. Yeah, no, it definitely was. And, it, it was nice to do it there on, on the year with everybody there. So, yeah, look at it. It, it was a pretty special moment for us that we'll re- remember for sure. So, mm-hmm. yeah. It, and, it was. and then even rolling over the ramp, like you were presented with the, the Manus Kelly trophy. Like that, you know, you like were very friendly with Manus. That, that was very poignant as well, like the family there and all. And then, you know, I don't think there was a dry eye in the house. You want to get your helmet out of the car and show that you had the Manus uh, 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 ribbon on the back of it, you know. I think that was just, it was just one of those moments that's going to live long in the the rallying legend. Yeah, certainly. And I suppose whenever we're all standing there, as you said, there like it was everybody was trying to hold back the tears or whatever. But I just knew whenever the, the whole family was there, and like I I knew that the ribbon was on my helmet or whatever, so I had to just grab it for for the for them and and everybody else there and. Yeah, look at it. It was a special moment there, and uh, it's as I said, it'll, it'll be another thing that we certainly remember for a long time. For sure, for sure. And Marion, like uh, also like in the Rossa Penna, you wrote in third place your second time doing Donegal. Like that was pretty cool for yourself, wasn't it too? Like, yeah, I think I, I kind of said to JJ when we go back in the car. I think that that almost felt to us at the time like like winning any other rally kind of thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, just the, the amount of people there and the the names, like you said. I mean. People coming up to shake my hands. I obviously knew who they were, but I didn't think they'd have a clue who I was, kind of thing, you know. But um, yeah, that, that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, it was a it was a nice experience, and obviously, if you could win, it'd be better. But I think you've seen the names that haven't won Donegal over the years. It just shows you how hard it is. So um, yeah, we'll see. But um, yeah, like I said last year when we come off Atlantic Drive, I think we just got third in the last stage. So obviously, hardly had a problem. And, yeah, that was a, a nice end to the weekend because I think we just we were very patient last year really we knew second time there we were going to struggle to race and we weren't really in the best of form anyway and uh yeah we just kind of plugged away and got there in the end so yeah it was a nice reward yes for sure and like you know you got to meet up with an old friend again like the the 12b was sitting there as well too and like I caught you just taking a wee sneaky look around it it was nice to see that you're you know the 12b again <laughs> yeah, always nice to see it. We actually we we went over to the um the donor's place in November, I think, when the prize giving was on, and uh, my mum came with us because she she never comes to any of the rallies, and uh, mum loves that car. And we opened the door, the first car we saw was that, and mum nearly cried. <laughs> 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 Yeah, and like you know, there is just something like, so emotive about the car, and then you know, and the twelve B as the twelve B, the noise and everything else as well. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, there's something special about the car when when mum doesn't let dad sell her alley car. Yes, <laughs> usually she's pushing him to get rid of it. So. <laughs> and at the end, she calls the shots at the end of it all. <laughs> oh yeah, well, she pushes send on the bank transfers as such. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Callum, I suppose like for yourself then, like as there are stages that stand out for you, like you know, you know, yes, the new stages, new challenge and all that, but is there particular stages that you really get when you're sitting at the start line, you're just mad to get at it? Um Yeah, there's actually a few there's a few, Kevin, like to be fair. Um the ones you look forward to, like yeah, like the usual like Glen, Atlantic Drive, Knock Gala, they're all they're all stages you always want to do every year. Um, I think Donegal would be the same if they kind of if they didn't have them sort of way. Um, but yeah, look, I look forward to it. I look forward to all of them. They usually do have all they have everything and all the stages that they have to offer all the time. As I say, like them stages on Friday is going to be completely different characters characteristics of the normal stages that we get. So look, it has everything. Uh, as I say, um, so yeah, I'll be looking forward to all of them anyway. That's for sure. And like you know, like. 
us as spectators, like you know, we marvel at these R fives, you know, like the the corner speed and all that. As like for yourself, I'll start maybe with Kel and this one. Like, is it still surreal what you can do in the MKRs? Like you've come up through like you know the the Adam and the Fiesta and things. Like stepping into that R five. Even every time you get in and go down the first stage, is it still like how lucky are you to be driving this? <laughs> oh, it's, it's fantastic there. Yeah, the adrenaline and, and uh, what these cars can do is is, is crazy. Like um, especially on dry tarmac, the, the corner speed they can do it's it's still hard to get your head around most of the time. Um, especially. Yeah, that's 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 there's some piece of kit like and I think even like a couple of years back, um the Gary Gary Jens always goes quite hard in the old S twelve and you know, he was he was still he, he kinda realised that their fives the way forward that they're kinda struggling. So it just shows the evolution of them and they're moving forward all the time and the cars are getting quicker, so yeah, we're, we're definitely happy to be in them and yeah, getting the experience. It's it's uh, yeah, it's fantastic, isn't it? That's for sure, that's for sure. And like Josh, you know, you had the Fiesta WRC and like I, like probably like at the R five would definitely be quicker on them now, isn't it? Just amazing the way that technology keeps progressing. Yeah, and well, there's there's a real drivability out of the R five cars, which makes them great. And look, I, I love driving them. The the the, the corner speed at, at high speed you can take it's it's unbelievable. Like, and I think anybody needs to sit in it to actually believe like how how well they can corner at such high speeds and. Uh, then like over jumps and bumps, like it's just unbelievable. Like you can just like fly and crash them into the ground and they just absorb it and continue whatever. But like, I still think like, I, I, I do miss the WRC car from the like, the sheer grunt and, and aggression. And a, a much harder car to drive, I would say. Mm -hmm. But uh, look, at I, I'd be happy just driving anything. W one thing I do, wish um i never actually drove a two liter wrc car and, and yeah. that's something i like from a younger age I used to look up at videos of the likes of gg galley driving them and stuff and i always thought they were class but never got the opportunity but uh maybe someday i will but yeah with the r5 car for now like very, very happy with it yeah and like you know like, there's no denying the hyundai now is probably not the cotton edge but it's still doing what you need it to do yeah, look at I, I suppose just whenever you know something so well, and you know we obviously struggled with it for a long time uh, at the start, and a bit of that was probably just from from driving the Fiesta for so long, and and it being the way it is or whatever, and, and getting into a new car it just took time to really adapt to it and and sink in, and now now I just know the car so well, like I, I'd have no doubt if I went to to Donegal and like let's say Volkswagen Polo like Callum's and Marion's there like mm -hmm. they're probably deemed a, a better car like it's sort of the car that everybody wants but I'd probably go slower in one of them yeah. so that's probably why I'm, I'm still in the Hyundai like I just I know it and I, I can still do it in the car so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm certainly happy with it you know yeah like it's probably like to draw a comparison maybe like with Eugene Donnelly one time he was driving the Corolla like he could make that do things that nobody else could do and that and you're the same the Hyundai you know what, how it's going to react whenever you know you do you in a certain steering input or you know whatever it's, that car will do what you want it to do exactly like it's just it's just knowing it and being fit to push it to the to the limits and look at you could go over the limit there very easily <laughs> as i'm sure you can see sometimes but it's just trying to just trying to keep that fine line and, and keep on the right side of it and yeah look at we're, we're happy where we are at the minute yeah and like Marion, like Melvin Evans Motorsport have seen them all, you know, nearly every R5 car, you know, the two litre world car that, you know, that Josh is hankering after there as well. Mm. Like, you know how good the polo is. Like, do you, no, do, do you feel it's the ultimate R5 car or Rally 2 car at the moment? Well, I think at the moment it's still definitely sort of one of the best. It's mm. hard to know exactly. I don't think there is the best R5 car kind of thing. It's probably down to driver, like Josh said. If he jumped in a polo, I don't know, he probably wouldn't be as quick as what he's in the Hyundai, you know, it's it's the way people drive. But overall the polo yeah, is uh it seems still to be a very good package and when we was a look at trying to do some small things to try and keep them a bit, you know, keep them relevant and current. So yeah, I mean we've got five of them still, so I'm gonna say they're good. <laughs> but I, I don't you know at the end of the day when when they haven't been 
sort of we've tended to move them on, you know, if there's been something better and and sort of there's like there's a, still a few good teams in Europe that have, that have kept hold of them, like you know Sarazan in France won the French Championship with them last year, beat some factory Citroen, so you know there's nothing wrong with the car at all. No, that's for sure. And like you know, we should mention you're going to have a new teammate, well, a returning teammate in Donegal, um, Matt Edwards coming back. Uh, how do you feel? Uh, like, you th- will it be like putting on an old pair of gloves for Matt? Do you think? Yeah, it'll be fine for Matt. To be honest, I, I've I've kind of always wanted to work with him as a driver because obviously I never drove with him when he did the BRC in twenty one. I always kind of stuck behind the scenes to keep things running that year and. Matt works very. He's very professional the way he works, and he he knows what he wants. And um, yeah, he's 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 good like that, you know. So I'm looking forward to it. I think we can help each other quite a bit, to be honest. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a shame that he, he he can't get the budget to do a bit more because I think he's 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 quick enough to be racing at the front on on any rally he goes to. So yeah, it'll it'll be interesting. He showed last year he didn't uh, didn't really need too much time to to get back on the pace, and and this year now it's in a car that he he kind of knows. Okay, it's. 18 months since he drove on, but you know that I think he'll settle in quite quickly again. That's for sure, that's for sure. And like Callum, like you know, seeing Matt Edwards on, on the entry list, it's added another dimension to the event, you know, like it's it's but brought a wee bit of spice, maybe that maybe in the way of putting it. Yeah, it definitely has. Um, yeah, Matt came last year, he definitely was uh, he was an easy work for last year now, it was it was tenths of seconds we were matching all the time, so. Yeah, look, he's he's not three time British champion for nothing, so he's uh yeah, he's got the speed like and yeah, as as Marian says, he's very professional in what he does. Um he's working on the Reliance background all the time. Um obviously tutoring drivers and, and getting guys best setups. Actually a lot of guys in Ireland best set up on t- polos this last while. So like he's he's he, I have no doubt the guy's gonna hit the ground running and he's gonna be uh it's gonna be a hard work way, but yeah, look, this is what we that's what we want. We wanna be wanna be on a race. Everybody wants to be in a race and, and see what the see where the level's at. So no, I'll be looking forward to it. That's for sure. And Josh, and for yourself, like you know, like yes, Matt's there, but you know, there's Sam, there you know, there's Robert Barrable, Jesse Henry, you know, like there the uh, Johnny Greer, like there's probably at least ten guys going to Donegal feel that, you know, at the very least the podium's there. Like that speaks so highly of the Irish rally at the moment. Yeah, look at it. I think to be fair, the competition at the at the minute is it is fairly high end. Like it's 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 top there, and like certainly the top ten there will all be punching like top times the whole weekend. And I'm sure the top ten all want to win the rally and it has some level of ambition to 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 win the rally too. So yeah, look at Matt's going to be quick, but equally I'm sure a lot of other guys is going to be very fast there as well. Yeah, and like you know. Does that help push you on as well? Does that make you strive to get to a better level as well? Uh, probably if I look at the results after the first stage and, and see the game <laughs> down a few lines, that's probably the, the, the biggest push for me. Um, so, yeah, look, we'll just take the rally in our stride and, and push on as we need to, you know? Mm-hmm. And You know, I think, um, like... I look back at Kalani and I, I always think at rallies, if I'm beating these two boys here, then I'm probably going to be winning the rally, you know? Yes. And so we got the end of Healy Pass and, and we'd beaten them on the first two stages. I thought, right, that's good. And we got the service and we were third. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> it shows the level, you know. But okay, you know, I think the two Robs out there are a better tire than this flat loop, but still, you know, it shows the level, you know. Yeah. But for me, I was like, right, that's got to be a good loop, but still, it wasn't good enough. <laughs> that, uh, but that is the crazy thing about Irish Rally, and it is. Like, there's such a level that any of those guys can do it and that, that's brilliant to see for for us spectators and it must be great for you as drivers too to be involved in that as well yeah it's it's brilliant to be fair it's um the thing is you can't make a mistake really like you spin or lose 20 seconds and you can probably say there's a there's a good chance you won't see that again you know or you won't see the guy you were racing again mm-hmm. and Callum, from your point of view like is, is that battle is that what you know why you enjoy rallying so much that you get so much of a buzz out of it. That... Yeah, that's exactly why. Um, yeah, you, you want to improve every time, and it's good when there's about four or five guys all the time pushing you on, and it gives you something to aim for all the time. So, no, I think I think Irish rallying is very very strong with the minute. It's been as strong as it's ever. I mean, like I know it was it was a great era watching the, the world cars and so many of them back in the day, but. I don't think the margins were ever so tight as they are now. Like, um, like Josh beat me there last weekend by 
one point eight of a second, like and like it was last stage and like Donegal last year was tenths of seconds, it was tenths of seconds all the time, you know. And yeah, I think back in the day it was more seconds and power and the car and the best machinery, but I think the air is quite good and I think it will probably when we're when they're later stage of Orion, I think we'll then realise how how good a how good a time it was, you know. Yeah, I think I think we'll finish, finish what, up with yourself there. Like this is like the golden era. Like we we will look back in a few years' time and say say how good this rallying was. We probably don't. We yes, we know it's good, but we don't realise just probably how good this is now at the moment. Yeah, look, I I I I totally agree with that. Um, I don't know what what more to say to it. Like I, I do think we're going through like a, a fairly special time on the rallying front at the minute. Uh, there's a lot of people out, and um, there's like I don't know how many R five cars there is in Donegal, but there's a lot. Like, and uh, I don't know if we're going to continue to see that over coming years or whatever. But just the, the level of competition is, is just so 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 tight at the minute and so close. And for me, that's what makes rallying great. Like uh, it's. If you're being beat, like it's just a perfect excuse to go flat out, there, and that's what I enjoy doing. So, um, you know, winning rallies by a comfortable margin, which I, I've done in the past, like you start to lose the pleasure out of it because you're not driving ten tenths. Um, so for for me at the at the minute, I'm certainly enjoying rallying. You know, yeah, it's ten tenths all the way. <laughs> Look, fantastic to hear from Callum and Josh and Marion. And, you know, we really appreciate them taking their time. And again, another crew that we caught up with is Matt Edwards and Dave Moynihan. Kevin, you were speaking to them earlier in the week. Yeah, uh, again, just before, um, uh, Matt especially came on all the way from Barbados, you know, to talk to us as well, which was very kind of, you know, I'm sure he had enough on his plate out there. So, but yeah, I think without further ado, we'll hear from the two boys. Uh, yeah, I think a few I's to dot and T's to cross, but um, you know, thanks to a, a number of supporters, we've um, we plucked up the courage to have another go. I don't think Mr. Moynan took much persuading, but uh, yeah, we're, we're good to go. I think. Yeah, I think Dave, from your point of view, yeah, you you said this, you bike Matt up. You know, we there's a job to be finished, and yes, we're determined to get back this year. A job to finish, all right, Kevin. But um, I wouldn't say it's a job to win; it's a job to get back and try and finish the event. You know, I've. I've done Donegal a good few times and I've very rarely made the finish line. So, um, no, I don't, here it'll be very hard to come back and race Callum and Josh and the boys have seek time all year. This time last year, Callum and Josh have done Tamar Championship events. Now they've doubled up in national and international events and, and both going very well. But here it'll be great to get back out and um, and compete again in them stages. Yeah. And like, Matt, from your point of view, like, you know, you have been, you know, been helping all the guys out. But, you know, as Dave said, their lack of seek time, that's going to be. That you know, there's nothing can really prepare you for that. Only being behind the seat, like it's going to put you at a disadvantage to start with. Do you feel? No, don't give me excuses, Kevin. <laughs> no, no, I've don't got start that. Lined up there in a list. And he's no, he's no excuses. <laughs> he sent me a list earlier, you know. <laughs> no, forget it. <laughs> okay, we'll back he's over not, to he's you. He's retreat and everything. <laughs> um, no, I mean. We all know it's a factor, but I, I I believe you know what I what I teach and what I do has a you know we've always talked about a process and I, it's another it's another time I'm going to need to rely on that and a, another opportunity to demonstrate that hopefully it it works to to some fashion and the polo is a known quantity I haven't been in it since twenty four uh, twenty twenty one in on the gravel but um, you know the tarmac we're on a bit later but still it's it's a long time getting back into uh, the perception of what a car will do. And, you know, I think going back to the polo, you know, it is a bit more of a known quantity than we were in last year. So hopefully that'll help. Uh, but with Friday stages all being new, that should level it out a little bit. And, um, yeah, just looking forward to the challenge. And as David says, getting back out competing and, you know, I had such a good experience last year, such good, um, you know, feedback afterwards and such support from, from everybody. I mean, even up until last week when I was over for, the Tipperary Forest, it was like every control was, you know, the marshals were talking to us about Donegal and are you going and, you know, bad luck last year. And it's just everywhere we've been ever since has been, you know, it's always been a, a relevant topic. So, you know, we're, we're glad to sort of repay that support and go back and try again. 
Yeah. Like you mentioned the polo, like is it, is it going to be, you think, almost like meeting up with an old friend again, you hopefully you'll just slip back into the conversation as if you only met them yesterday? <laughs> I really hope so. <laughs> uh, there, was, there, was, there was a number of factors, you know, wasn't that many options really. Um, you know, Keith Lyons was really good with us um, for the Midland Rally and, you know, we tried to put a deal together there initially and, and unfortunately that didn't quite come to fruition and, you know, we had a good a good opportunity to go with the polo. So we, we, we tried really hard to make that happen. And, you know, we, even when did I fly out here? The, the day I flew here, we, we very nearly pulled the pin because, you know, it was, it wasn't looking very good at all. And, you know, we said, Oh, we'll call it tomorrow morning. Dave never called it. I never called it. We <laughs> gave it to four hours. And by the time I got off the flight here, we pulled, you know, I got the wifi on the plane and was flat out, you know, calling and messaging and doing what we could. And by the time we got off here, it was looking a lot more promising. So, again, it's all come together very quickly, very last minute. But, you know, we neither of us wanted to to call it and, and throw in the towel. So so here we are. And, like, Dave, that, that steely determination from both sides of the car, you just weren't going to let this go. That was going to happen one way or another. Yeah, but this kind of started... Um here has been talked about for the last 12 months or you always talked about in the hospital bed I'd say afterwards but um, but here to be honest like Matt says it was very close to being being pulled because we just simply weren't getting support and to be fair it's challenging times for everyone and Irish Rally is not the easiest thing to sell yes it's a brilliant domestic championship we're blessed to have the level of competition we have but to say it, to sell it is very difficult because the you know, yes Killian does a great job what he does but it doesn't get it to the it doesn't get it to your so far to your couch. People don't see it in television. It's very hard to sell that to a company when you're trying to find a budget to the scale of what it takes to run those cars or hire those cars. Um so yeah, like Matt said, it was very close to going or to being pulled. And that that's it was it became a how would you say a more sensible decision. You know, it's not something you can go and afford to put everything you have yourself and more into the pot from both sides. Uh and then it could end in three mile, and you know that's that's the realistic that's the real that's the real thing about it. So um, but here we're 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 blessed. Some people came on board who, like Matt said, you we went back to say something. Look, this isn't looking good. So, just you know where we're at, this is likely not going to happen. And they stepped up to a greater degree, or they encouraged somebody else to get in touch, and so on and so forth. Like even up until, like you said, with the launch last week, you know, I went to the launch, and the following day, the phone call, somebody saying you're at. What way are you with the budget for running all? Are you there or not there? And and they've come on board since. So there has been a great um a great level of support towards getting back there. Um from everyone, you know, both that my own family, Matt's side, you know, everyone has put the work in to, to try and get this off the ground and get back to it. So and it's all for I would say for our enjoyment, not necessarily theirs from the stand me. So it's, yeah. it's it's very humbling in that regard. That's for sure. And like, you know, you spoke about the launch there, like last Friday night, the crowd that turned out like it was it blew me away. I don't know how you felt, but like there, there's a real appetite for Donegal this year. There's a real fever building up around it at the moment, isn't there? I think there always is, Kevin. Be fair, you. It's like I said at the launch, you Donegal. No matter how good an event, you know, and West Cork, Killarney, Cork Twenty, Ulster, they all Galway, they all put on great events. But there's just that thing with Donegal. It's the middle of the year. Everyone's working towards it, and uh, you know that's that's everyone's target to be competitive come the third week of June, you know, and nobody stays at home. You know, anyone who can get there gets there. And um like yeah, there was a great turnout, you know, in Hegarty's last last Friday night. And when you see Gary, Rory, you know, James Cullen, Vincent Boner, you know, them people, you know, who are there, all past winners, you know, that are all there and still who, who are still, how to say, not just Gary who are competing obviously with James Cullen, Vincent Boner, you know, who are still hooked in the rally and the buzz it brings. And you know, you hear people like Daniel Conaghan and um, DC who are 30 years you know, competing, you can see why you know, everything works towards Donegal. Everyone's season revolves around what budget you have. Donegal comes out of it, and then what's left over goes elsewhere nearly. But it's um, no, here it's it's fantastic. You know, and to see the display of cars that were laid on by the club and people who supported it, um, and the public who were there, you know, local and further afield. Like, like, like we were leaving as lads up in Killy Beggs, and you know, I know it's still Donegal, but it's an hour and a half or more away, so mm -hmm. it's um, it's a brave John for them. That's for sure. That's for sure. And like Matt, you get to experience the Donegal, you know, this, you know, what we talk about and we we think it's special. Last year was your first year. So obviously it had an effect on you and you were so keen to get back this year too. 
yeah i mean there's a bit of me that doesn't like unfinished business as well so uh, <laughs> there's a lot of me that doesn't like that but um yeah i mean there's not many places you go or certainly that i go that you've got three mile tailbacks that you've got to try and negotiate on you know after your last leap of stages and you know the the the, 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 the they're iconic stages okay friday's new but you know there's, there's there's something about those other stages that you just want to keep going and you know we didn't do fanned the full length and it, we hopefully we get the opportunity to do that and you know there's there's lots of there's lots of other mileage we didn't do as well on the sunday but we'll we'll try and do that this year. Drive, <laughs> yeah, I'll try and do a bit more about this year. <laughs> um, but, uh, it, you know, there's something about being in an R5 car on on stages like that and roads like that, and you know, with the amount of public that are out watching, and you know, it's um, as a competitor, it's it's what you, it's what sort of in your blood, really. And you know, as much as you know, I, I'm I'm lucky that I'm earning earning a living, you know, out you know here where I am now, and and working in the sport, you just can't replace the sort of the the adrenaline and the buzz. The excitement and the you know as much as anything the focus it, it gives me with an event ahead and you know I'm, I'm certainly not one for running up and down a beach but you know it's it's it doesn't need much incentive with that on the cars to jump back in a polo in Donegal and you know that's a motivation for me out here is you know, equally preparing for for next weekend as, as the weekend after whilst I'm here so and like you know big you're like imagining now you're, you know you 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 talked about your process and you know like the, the Friday morning, you're heading into new stages, new to everybody. Does there be like, does there be nerves there, or do you have to try and blank everything out? Is it just I'm here to do a job, forget everything else, or is you know is there time for nerves or jitters? I think uh, there there are all there is always nerves. The, 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 I don't think there's been a time where I've not been nervous, sat on the first stage. But I I think I made the the comparison to being on a train that's going through a tunnel is. You're going through and you can't get off, and that's kind of the the feeling that took over me on on the Midlands Rally with with a lot of probably potentially negative thoughts going through your head, but like the the routine and things sort of takes over, and you know it doesn't leave room for that sort of thought, and you just you just get on and off you go, and you know I think we've got a lot we we overwrote wrote a lot of the negatives on that rally. Okay, we didn't win, but it it certainly felt like a a win and a big step in the right direction for both of us and you know I, I i think that puts us in a good frame of mind to start the rally um we'll get a, a small test um the week the week of the rally which will be great and you know that that'll you know certainly settle the nerves and give us some 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 positive vibes to go into the recce and, and the rally on friday yeah and like melvin evans preparing the polo for you like melvin you know the, the record they haven't done a goal as well they have won it four times you know, they, it's one of the events that they look forward to as well. They will give you a car capable, you know, of doing the business as well. So that, that's a given almost, isn't it? It is, yeah. I mean, there's an, an air of familiarity, you know, again to me that, you know, I've been watching in car and things both of last year and of time in the polo that puts me somewhere near to the mindset before I get there, which, you know, is something I've always done. And, you know, I'm quite keen on, on the homework side of it, as, as everybody knows. And, you know, that, Mel's, you know, been very accommodating and you know very keen, obviously, to support the the program. And you know, we had to make a call almost for his benefit to get things ready properly. And you know, a lot of what we've been working on, budget wise and preparation wise, is so that we can be there in the right frame of mind. You know, if you're not comfortable with the the risk, you know, the financial risk and and things like that, then you're never going to perform. And yeah, you know, we were the, the we the reason we were going to pull it was because if we were left it much longer, Melvin wouldn't be in the best place to provide what he would want to provide and we wouldn't be in the best position to prepare accordingly. And you can't, you can't send it down some of those roads without all those things in place, you know, properly and, and to the best of your ability. So we didn't want to do it any, any other way than, than right. So. Mm -hmm. And Dave, like, you know, you talked there about, like, you know, uh, Matt said about, you know, Longford almost like cleared the head, you know, got rid of all those negatives, uh, like, can you now go on to Donegal back, you know, back where you were this time last year? Um, I think we go back to Donegal a better place more this time last year. Well, for me, certainly, you know, Donegal last year, it was near on four years before SSI sat in the car competitively. Um, and after Longford, obviously, you know, we said this in the podcast after Longford, you know, once for Matt, it's 10, then the gap, seven, six, five. Once you get to that stage, it's um, it becomes 
how do you say it's nearly it's, it's very natural what 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 happens thereafter you know um so no for me you know this time last year I was very apprehensive because obviously it was a long sabbatical out of a car competitively four years um so there was nervousness there obviously I'd never sat with Mac competitively before yes we built a good friendship we worked together but never in that capacity um now I understand his note system or I know what I'm getting into if you understand me um and and it's more fresh in your head the, the ability and capabilities of those cars. So whereas last year you kind of felt the no man's land on Friday for me because you didn't know whether you were delivering notes at the right speed, the right time, and you weren't you didn't know what to expect because you had me in the car in so long it wasn't fresh in your mind as to what what it can do or how it can do it. Um, whereas now yes the polo is completely to me I've never been in one um, but it, it's still they're all very they're all very similar in their attributes you know, so in that respect you know, I, I think we're in a better place now than we were and like you said hopefully a Matt gets a hold of it for that short test before the goal it becomes welcome back old friend and let, let's go again do you get me um, here we'll, we'll see it um, Donny, Donny, Donny Gaul is Donny Gaul, you know, yes it'd be in some respects it'd be nice to go back to last year's Friday stages because you know those notes worked the pace was good you know what to expect but then the other side of that is that you don't give the other boys the advantage of having the seat time in their current car or the car they had last year to carry it forward and analyse the in car and know where the time was left or so on and so forth going to new stages. Um, but hey, we're not, we're not, you know, yes, we're, there's no secret. We're going to be competitive or trying battle at the front of it, but there's still no, there's no illusion that, you know, Callum and Josh, Gary, Desi, you know, all these lads are all on a fantastic pace. Sam, you know, all they all have the, the knowledge, the, all of the seat time. No one goes slow up there and everyone raised their game that extra bit when it comes to Donegal. So there's no illusion that we're going to go to Donegal in a polo which is more familiar and you know maybe more suited from the offset to what we had last year and be at the front. That, that That's not necessarily there, but to be competitive, yes, but we're not expecting to go there and to, and to, to be ahead of Callum. You know, the boys are at, at a Irish running is at a huge, at a massive level. It was in that was pre 2019 when Craig came. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I listened to one of your podcasts recently, and you know, when you hear that Craig won a rally, but never by more than seven seconds in 19. You know, that's that just gave a testament where Irish rallying is at pace wise. Um, and that was Josh, Alistair, Callum. You know, that time. So mm-hmm. the, the the bars that you know it hasn't moved. Them boys are still going very quickly, and and now they're more comfortable at that pace. You know, we haven't seen Josh or Callum or Sam just make mistakes this year, so. They're all very comfortable what they're doing, so um, yeah, it'll it'll be good. It's it's yeah. so it, you know it, it'll be to me really more comfortable than it was heading to Donegal last year from my side and there for sure. And like you know we're talking about you know the the Friday stages like great for me they're like with a few miles here from the house. I like that that will be the one the one for everybody. Like there was parts of the stage used in Rally Ireland, you know parts of them in the Harvest twenty twelve, but they're like the the. the, the that's at the minimum 11 years ago so that that means it's fresh it's new it's you know there's nobody as you talked about going through their notes from last year that it's a clean sheet of paper for everybody a clean sheet of paper and a big opportunity <laughs> <laughs> you know, we saw you know, what Callum did last year um on the first stage he took that that gap in the first stage and he still never took it back off him you know, until until he stopped in Sunday morning you never got back ahead of that gap and you're listening to, you know, I, like I say, I did Rally Ireland when it ran that stage, but I've no recollection whatsoever of it. Um, I was about the year Gary won the Harvest 2012 and it ran in the same area, but again, it never drove the stages. But when you hear Killian say that stage one has potential for a lot of time, but potential for a huge upset is in, it's easy to make mistakes. And well, then that kind of, you know, there's no way that Callum, Josh, Sam, any of them, Matt and Clue, are going to try and leave, are going to, going to go in there and be prepared to leave 10 seconds behind them. You know, it's, it's not going to happen. So here it could spring a lot of surprises, positive or negative, I don't know. But here it's, that's the lottery of the game, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And like, Matt, from your point of view, like, you know, you've been over and, you know, you know, doing the events, you helping out the Pirelli thing and all. Like, you see how competitive it is, like a half spin, you know, like, a, you know, a fluff gear change almost can decide a rally. It, 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 it has got unreal, the competitive nature of Irish rally. Yeah, it's like from a, f- a racing perspective, it's almost like a qualifying lap every stage. You, there isn't the opportunity on a, even on a three-day rally to give 10 away on the first one. You know, you, you've got to you've got to nail everything from the word go. And that's, you know, that's the probably the biggest challenge these days is 
go into the first stage, the first leg or the first loop, you know, as with your with your race pace. And um, you know, that's the tricky thing to do with without the seat time because you know there'll be a lot of things in that first stage that'll be you know, sort of new all over, new all over again. And you know, okay, you're sat in the other seat quite a lot these days, and you know. But we go back to the Longford. You know, the first the first half a mile of the the first stage was, you know, corners over crests, and you know, my perception was already twenty percent less of what the car was capable of, and you know, that's that's where I've got to sort of use the test, and hopefully, we find a, a piece of road that's representative that puts me back in the level of confidence that you know, when you go to the recce, yes, the car will do that, it will do that, that will do that, that the the other guys have already got that sort of level of confidence from from the seat time they've had and the belief that it, that comes with it and you know that's you know the most important thing with these cars is is having the belief in what they'll do and you know being able to repeat it for for three days yeah you talked after longford about you know still even still after all your time in an r5 car that you know the comprehension of what they can do like is it is it still mind-blowing what they are capable of you know after three three years four years now in an r5 car yeah, it was twenty twenty sixteen was my first first event in an R five car, and that feels like a a lifetime ago. And I, I certainly think the longer you are out of them, you know, your brain returns to normality as to what you you expect a car to do. But you know, certainly Longford was a, a a big step back in that right direction, and to to give us some confidence and you know to realise what again what they can do. And there's no there's no substitute for just being in them all the time, really. And like uh, Dave, like you know, we should probably give Pirelli a plug. Like they have moved on so much in the, the you know the last few years as well. Like what was it the old saying was like purrs nothing without control. Like oh, you you yeah. need the, the right tires below I, you I, to to bring the best out of the car. Yeah, here it's um that that's you know as, as long as we've been working at it, it's still been education to us to see how how the rate of development that those two brands develop at you'll be both Pirelli and Michelin, you know, not knocking the other brands, you're your Hankook or your Kumo or your Cooper, whoever, but the rate of development that Pirelli and Michelin are developing at and the, the level of competitiveness the product the products have now is it's it's pretty mind blowing. Mm-hmm. And like even like from Donegal last year and Midland this year, Matt will land in Donegal and two three of the four tires have evolutionized again. You know, there's a new wet tire, new medium tire, new hard tire, which we haven't used in the past. Um, so you know that, that, that's it's it's um it's a massive part of it. Yeah, it definitely is. You know, and that's another aspect I hadn't thought of before that you mentioned. It now that three of the four tires in the range, you know, he hasn't he hasn't driven on yet. Not not in, not with a steering in his hand anyway. He's yeah. maybe in a car with them, maybe, but um he's never driven on them. So um here it's it's um the whole thing has moved on. It's, it's it continues to move on so quick. You know, like even like you hear now about like Matt came like he said in two thousand twenty one and set the polo trend you know himself and Austin came had a massive race and everyone had their polos because they were so far ahead of every other car here whereas now melvin and callum and these lads have pushed on the rate of development of the polo to irish tarmac so now there's an irish tarmac spec damper and different things they're using in ireland which you wouldn't have used at that time the same way Donny go last year we got on with things with the car we had but now there's a more specific damper because matt found his way to the the level end of the how do you say the end end of the range and the adjustability of the car and now they've made a new damper more suited to Irish tarmac you know so that that, that whole thing keeps moving on and that's that's the one thing about rallying in one way I suppose is that the rate of development is so quick that the cars move on so much but that's also I suppose where the job gets more and more expensive because that you know somebody somewhere is investing a lot of time a lot of money to make the product go quicker or be more drivable. Yeah. And somebody somewhere has to pay for it. <laughs> Unfortunately, so. So, like Matt, I suppose to wrap things up, like yeah, this is your opportunity to get back. Like you're going to grab it with both hands. Like, is this a one-off, or can you see it maybe developing into something else? <laughs> <laughs> it's barely a half off yet, Kevin. <laughs> um, there's no secret, you know. I've, I've... I'm what two years out of a, a full-time program now, and you know I, I miss it like mad. It's a big, you know, mental side for me is the focus on having something to to look forward to next. You know, I did 18, 19 years of doing a rally review, repeat. You know, review that one, repeat again, and 
you know, not having a program is quite difficult from that point of view. And, you know, I'd, I'd love to get something together for, for 2024 and, you know, re- regardless of what it was, to be honest. Um, so, you know, keeping fresh, keeping in, in a car and doing something, you know, even if it is a one-off and, you know, I've always had to make the most of every opportunity as a, you know, to leave her into the next one. And, you know, that's, that, that's no different. That's why the prep started even before we had a car or anything like that. There was always, you know, looking at the onboard and, you know, the fitness side of it and, you know, getting the mental side ready and, you know, it, it, chucking everything at it we can to get the best result because, you know, you're only as good as your last job really in this game. And, you know, the, the tuition side of it reflects that as well. And, you know, it's, it's important from a professional point of view to, to do a good job and, you know, doing a good job out there isn't necessarily just winning the rally. It's, it's getting around, no problems, making the right tire calls and being competitive and, you know, to be in the top three is not a, not an easy task. So, you know, that's, yes, we want to win it. There's no, there's no doubt, but, you know, we're, we're both there to do a professional job and the preparation will decide what, what the end result is really. Yeah. Two determined guys there. Yes. They want to put the demons of last year behind them, but I have a sneaky suspicion they're going to push for the one, you know, that's <laughs> uh yeah. They're not coming back to finish second, I don't think. But, you know, not only the three boys we spoke to earlier, there's, what, eight, ten other guys there, Connors, it's all going to, you know, you have Gary Jennings, Declan Boyle, Gareth McHale, previous winners of the rally, Sam Buffett, you know. Um, there's a numerous guys there that could win this rally. Absolutely is. And then, you know, Robert Barrelbull's another name as well there mm-hmm. to throw into the mix, you know, depending on what the weather does, depending on what happens at the front, you know, say it doesn't take much anymore to 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 change the results of the rally very rapidly. No, that's for sure. You know, and like the three days, the six stages and then uh, eight stages and then the further six on Sunday, I think that's, that's a lot of driving between Friday morning and Sunday evening. So like there's, you know, there's so there's no margin for error, but there's so many places that errors could be made. There is. And come here, we mentioned it earlier. The new stages on Friday, it'd be very interesting to see what that top 10 looks like on Friday evening. And then does does it change? Does it not change over the Saturday and the Sunday when they get into familiar territory? Yeah, you know, like, yes, the familiar territory, you know, the speed is high. And, the, you know, the familiar, familiarity with the stages, you know, we've seen last year, there was very little between them, you know, like, if some, somebody goes on to start the morning with a 20 second lead, it's going to be hard to find the 20 seconds. But then, you know, if you're 20 seconds behind, it's going to be hard to find the 20 seconds to get up as well, you know. So, like, uh, yeah, I think Friday is going to play a crucial role this year. Uh, yeah, genuinely is. But, you know, that, that piece you're saying about the familiar stages and the 20 seconds, look at Sunday last year. We lost mm. the top two, yeah. you know, within a stage of each other. It was just incredible. Yeah. And I think the uh, official was third as well. And he fin- ended up fifth, I think, the finish yeah. up last year. I think uh, it got a puncture and a uh, busted brake pipe. So it just, it shows you, like, it's just, there's always a twist in the tail of Donny Gall. Like, <laughs> don't get me wrong, last year there was so many twists and turns, it was hard to keep up at times. Absolutely. And when it gets to Sunday, there's no more coasting and saving yourself to get to the end, you know, with, with people backing off to hold a place. That just doesn't happen anymore. No, that is for sure, you know. Uh, like it's just going to be fascinating. Um, so I think that's part one. Uh, part two will be out now later in the week, and we in that we speak to some of the modified men and some other wee bits and pieces as well. I think you'll find very interesting. So please, as always, like, share, rate, subscribe. All those things make a huge difference. Just keep doing it, and you keep, keep please keep doing it. So until the next time, take care. Speak soon. Bye.